فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم دل الشيخ سيد وإعمالا لهذا الأصل and implementing this principle جمول الحديث the speech became beautiful أيها المؤمنون أو believers عن تعظيم العلم in honoring knowledge and glorifying knowledge فإن حظ العبد من العلم موقوف على حظ قلبه من تعظيمه وإجلاله the author here is saying وإعمالا لهذا الأصل implementing this principle what principle is he talking about trying to advise those who want to learn giving them the secrets of how to memorize and how to understand the religion and how to benefit from their time making them reach their hope allowing them to reach safety from what fi sahara al arai finding safety from opinions by becoming an opinionated person who is based on just theories and the darknesses of desires he said implementing this jamul al hadith the speech becomes beautiful O oh, believers beautiful of what and ta'zim al ilmi honoring knowledge because all of that is is ta'zim al ilm to honor knowledge Pay attention to this, Wallahi brothers. فَإِنَّ حَظَّ الْعَبْدِ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَوْقُوفٌ عَلَى حَظِّ قَلْبِهِ مِنْ تَعْظِيمِهِ وَأَجْلَالِهِ Attaining knowledge and gaining knowledge is all connected to how much you honor and you glorify knowledge. If knowledge is respected in your eyes and you honor knowledge and you glorify knowledge and you venerate knowledge then what you attain from knowledge is going to be in accordance to that. The word mawqufun ala hadhi qalbihi min ta'zim wa ijlali the word mawqufun it sometimes comes in the Arabic language as a lazim which is a transitive and sometimes it comes is as an intransitive verb. Lazim which and muta'addi. When it comes as a lazim which is a transitive verb, it means ittala'a or waqafa or to stand. When muta'addi, when it's an intransitive verb, sorry, when it's a transitive verb, so lazim is intransitive. So, and a muta'addi means when it transits to a maf'ul. It means when the verb moves on to a maf'ul, right? It requires a maf'ul. And it transits to the verb without any harf or anything. It does it directly itself. In the Arabic language, if you say, Ja'a Zaydun, Zayd, Zayd came. What do you say? Ja'a Fa'ilu Maadiyun Mabinu Al Fatalam Halalu Min Al Arab. Zaydun Fa'ilu Ja'a, right? Marfu'ul Alamat Rafi Dhamma Tu Dahiratu Ala Akhir. Where's the maf'ul? A Ja'a is a fi'il lazim. Ja'a doesn't need an object. It's a verb that doesn't require an object. But if you say daraba, what do you need? You need a maf'ul, you need an object. Because daraba is a fi'l which is a muta'addi. The word waqafa, it comes as both. Sometimes it can be a fi'l lazim and it sometimes can be fi'l muta'addi. When it is lazim, which is an intransitive verb, it comes as the meaning ittala'a to read or look over something. Or it is muta'addi, which is the case here right now. And here it means habs, to imprison. When it's muta'addi, it means to imprison. So what he's saying is that فَإِنَّ حَرَّ الْعَبْدِ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ a person's amount of knowledge he's going to gain is mawqooful, it's prisoned. For as long, it's imprisoned, as long as what? As long as your knowledge, you respect it, then you'll be freed. Now you're free, go. Does that make sense? So once ta'zimul ilm and ijlalul ilm, honoring knowledge, respecting knowledge comes from you, 
then the hadh and the nasib which you get from knowledge is great. Then the author says, فَمَنْ اِمْتَلَأَ قَلْبُهُ بِتَعْظِيمِ الْعِلْمِ وَإِجْلَالِهِ الصَّلَحَ أَنْ يَكُونَ مَحَلًّا لَهُ وَبِقَدْرِ نُقْصَانِ هَيْبَةِ الْعِلْمِ فِي الْقَلْبِ يَنْقُصُ حَظُ الْعَبْدِ مِنْهُ حَتَّى يَكُونَ مِنَ الْقَلْبِ قَلْبٌ لَيْسَ فِيهِ شَيْءٌ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ The author says, فَمَنْ اِمْتَلَأَ قَلْبُهُ Anybody who his heart is filled up with تَعْظِيمِ الْعِلْمِ Honoring knowledge and respecting knowledge وَإِجْلَالِهِ And venerating knowledge Salaha, this person is then appropriate. And yakuna mahallal lahu. There's two dabt of the word mahal. You can say bifathil ha'i wa kasriha. You can say mahal or you can say mahil. Both of them are right and they both mean the same. <coughs> if your heart is filled with respect for knowledge, honoring knowledge, venerating knowledge, guess what happens? Now you are appropriate for a person to take on knowledge. And well, that, like, one of the things that you see people who don't respect knowledge do is they always spread their legs out in front of the mashayikh and the shuyukh. Their legs are like that. Also, I'm not a mashayikh, so I don't mind. Personally, I'm not a shaykh. If you spread your legs, no problem. Don't worry. I'm talking about the mashayikh. Or they laugh. You, tell you can count their teeth in a gathering where the shaykh they're laughing, giggling, talking over. Also from the things is that the person doesn't respect knowledge, is that some of the people who read the books of knowledge, and it's very common, I, I'm also from those people who do that, is that you take your saliva and you do this, and then you turn over the page. That's disrespect of knowledge. And it's a disrespect of the Quran. If I took that saliva and I put it on your cheek, would you allow it? Would it be gross? Then why would you turn the Qur'an in the Mus'haf with your saliva? So respecting knowledge and honoring knowledge is basically a step before even if knowledge is going to enter your heart. Ta'zim al-ilm وَبِقَدْرِ نُقْصَانِ هَيْبَةَ الْعِلْمِ فِي الْقَلْبِ يَنْقُصُ حَظُّ الْعَبْدِ مِنْهُ حَتَّى يَكُونَ مِنَ الْقَلْبِ قَلْبٌ لَيْسَ فِي شَيْءٌ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ And if it decreases the respect, the venerating of knowledge, if it decreases يَنْقُصُ حَظُّ الْعَبْدِ مِنْهُ The knowledge which you're going to attain is also going to decrease with it. حَتَّى يَكُونَ مِنَ الْقَلْبِ Until your heart becomes قَلْبٌ لَيْسَ فِي شَيْء until your heart reaches a point, it goes low, 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 until you become a person who has no knowledge whatsoever. And that's why the author rahimahullah, chose to make it this name, Ta'zimul Ilm. Glorifying, venerating, revering, respecting, honoring knowledge. Then the author says, and this is the truth, wallahi, because a lot of the people, if you look at their, if you look at their dealings, they don't understand the value of knowledge, but they understand the value of money and wealth and food, right? If today we was to say this lesson that we're going to have, food is going to be given, are people going to come? Would they have come? They would. And the Prophet وسلم, he said in a hadith, لو يعلم أحدهم, If one of them were to know, he's talking about the munafiqeen, Salatul Isha, they don't come. The Prophet said, لو يعلم أحدهم, If one of them was to know, أنه يجد عرقا سمينا that he's going to find a bone full of meat if he knew that أو مرماتين حسنتين or he's going to get very two thin ribs the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said لا شاهد العشاء he would have come and participated in the عشاء صح why is that why is that the case because he knows the value of food and he knows how high food is so he knows he knows what meat can do for him. So he'll make sure he's there. He'll... All that you have to mention is food. Don't mention what it is, what type of food you're going to be giving. And look what the people do. They'll come in large amount. Huh? And the better the food is, the, the more people you bring in. 
as for the ilm and the knowledge that's been given it doesn't really have that weight for them and because of that naqusa hadhu bil ilm his understanding and the comprehension of knowledge has reduced and as the shaykh rahimahu hafizahullah said hatta yakuna al qalb until hatta yakuna min qalbi until he is min al qulub until the hearts become qalb laysa fi shay'un min al ilm so look at it the respect the higher the respect the more knowledge the lower the respect and the lower the venerating the lesser knowledge and the lesser the lesser ven venerating the lesser knowledge until you lessen the venerating and it becomes no respect for knowledge no knowledge for you as well then the author then said faman azzama al ilma la hat anwaruhu alayhi faman azzama anyone who venerates and honors and glorifies knowledge la hat means a zaharat it becomes apparent on him anwaruhu alayhi the light on of knowledge the light it starts to manifest on him you can see start yatala'la minhu ilm rusukh wa wafadat rusul fululihi ilayh the shaykh is now using another form of balagha which is wa wafadat rusul fululihi ilayh means that knowledge is sending delegations to you a waft is a delegation different sciences will start coming to you and say take me on board wa wafadat wufud is the jama' it's a delegation fununihi ilayhi funun means the different sciences nahu will come to you and say look take me on this is a person who from an azam al ilm na lahat anwar the light of knowledge starts showing on him and also the sciences start to come to him because he's respecting knowledge so nahu will say yeah here i am i'm in your service what do you want from me usul al fiqh will come mustalah al hadith all the sciences will just come in his said because he respects knowledge he honors knowledge he glorifies his knowledge and he knows the weight that knowledge carries walam yakul li himmati ghayatun illa taraqi and this person his aspiration is nothing he has no ultimate aspiration illa except talaqihi to gain it and to have it that's all he wants he just wants to get to the bottom of it now many people first day or two days they come they listen they mashallah it was good i like that tomorrow they don't come they play call of duty ah that's it he's gone what happened to you wallahi akhi subhanallah he uses too many technical terms i went to a lecture in this in the city i'm not going to name it and so when i went i did a book and explained it and they chose to never invite me again la bas tahur so i wanted to know did i say something wrong did i was i did i deal with them in an unfair way they said no you're too technical you teach too too much information because of that we don't want to invite you again if you want to do lectures and reminders and heart softening for ni'mah those are all open for you sah so my question is is that if we're only going to make every time lectures lectures and this is the problem i realize many of the people who run administrations of masjids are jahala ignorant people i'm sorry to say I'm truly sorry to say it but this is the reality they don't know the the the, the, the status and the position of what of knowledge how important it is so if you who are the running the masjid and the administration don't realize how great this is how important it is when are the people going to realize to study If all knowledge is about is lectures now our mashayikh and our ulama as i said before they did lectures for people who were studying a person who had he was gaining knowledge he was attaining knowledge and sometimes his aspiration goes a bit down and then he all goes to youtube and he listens to a lecture brings him back up again are you with me or he goes to a muhadara or he goes to a seminar a quick reminder that listens and bam he's up again and he goes back to what he was doing lectures and muhadarat are not for people who are what 
uh, is to make it for the people like it's a main course meal every single time the masjid is just doing Friday lectures Khalas. no lessons, no books, nothing and also it is done for people who are on the streets of course if you open a book for them straight away they won't take it from you also them to bring their heart alive you do it for them but straight away you're, bringing it, you're using the lecture to bring them to a circle of knowledge a ilm based program that's important and Shaykh Salih ibn Abdullah ibn Muhammad al Usaymi, Hafidhahullah is a prime example for that. The Shaykh is known to go through books in a very short period of time. فمن عظم العلم لاحت أنواره عليه ووفدت رسل فنوره إليه ولم يكن لهمته غاية إلا تلقي ولا لنفسه لذة إلا الفكر فيه. And his nafs doesn't have any other joy except thinking about knowledge. When he's not teaching, when he's not studying, he's dreaming and he's thinking about knowledge. That's all he is. Even when he's lying down on bed and he's sleeping, a mas'ala comes to his head on the pillow. He's gone to sleep. He jumps off the bed. He goes running to the room. He opens the book and he remembers the mas'ala. And sometimes he stands up looking at the mas'ala and he realizes 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half has gone by and he's still standing. His mind is preoccupied with knowledge. This is a person who has honored and respected knowledge. And that's what an Imam Ahmad was like. At an old age, they saw him carrying a log where he wanted to write a scroll, where he just wanted to write a hadith. And they said to him, Ilam Mataya Aba Abdullah, how long are you going to carry on? And he said, Min al Mahabarati ila al Makbara. From the cradle to the grave, it's not going to stop. Some of the Salaf, they said, when they were seen seeking knowledge at an old age, and they were said to them, Ila mata, for how long? And he said, maybe I haven't learned a mas'ala that will bring me success in the hereafter. Maybe I didn't learn that mas'ala. So they were, rahimahumullah jami'an. Huh. So they were, rahimahumullah jami'an, those who believed that they needed to increase and know, learn, more, learn, learn more and attain knowledge as it is. The author then goes on to say, And it's as though Abi Abi Aba Muhammadin, his name is Abdullah Ibn Abdul Rahman Ibn Al Fadl Ibn Bahraman Ibn Bahram Ad Darimi. He died the year 255 and he was born 181. Rawa Ali Ibn Aoun. He narrated from Ibn Aoun. Wa Yazid Ibn Harun. Wa Rawa Al Muslim. And Imam Muslim narrated from him. Wa Abu Dawood Wa Tirmidhi Wa Abu Zura. And Imam Muslim, Abu Dawood, Al Tirmidhi, and Abu Zur'at Al Razi, they all narrated from him. There was an Imam, Min Aimati Al Sunnah. Wa ka'anna Aba Muhammad al Darimi. It's as though Abu Muhammad al Darimi, Al Hafiz, Lamaha had al Ma'ana. Lamaha mean two meanings, one of two meanings. One can mean a itala, he saw this, Wara'a, and he realized this meaning. And another one can mean Fahima, he understood. Both of them come to the same meaning. One is Dalalatu al Mutabaka, and the other one is Dalalatu Il Tizam. Lamaha had al Ma'na Abu Muhammad al Darimi also understood this meaning. Which meaning? How great and how noble knowledge is and glorifying knowledge. How important this point has to be driven home. Even he understood that. Fakhata makitab al Ilmi Suhi. Concluded and summarized his chapter Kitab al Ilmi Min Sunanihi in his Sunan. He has a good, he's got a book called Sunan Darimi, right? In that Kitab, there's Kutub, 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 Kitab, Kada, Kitab, Kada, Kitab, Kada. There's Kitabs. And within the Kitabs, there's a Kitab called Kitab al Ilmi. The last chapter, I mean, last Bab in Kitab al Ilmi is called Babun fi Adam al Ilmi. The chapter of honoring, venerating, glorifying knowledge. So as the Sheikh is trying to say here is, 
This is something I took from those who came before me. What did Abdul Rahman Nasr Saudi say? Jazahumullah, Jazah, Jazah, Jazahumul Mawla, Adim al Ajri, Wal Afa, Wal Ufran, Ma'al Birri. What did he say? Forget Aniya to Shartul before that. What did he say? Huh? Before that, what did he say? What's the beginning of the Nadm? I keep mixing all the Alhamdulillah Hilari. Huh? Alhamdulillah Hil Adim al Arfaqi, Ali al Arfaqi, Wajam al Ashai wal Mufariki. ذي النعم الواسعة الغزيرة والحكم الباهرة الكثيرة ثم الصلاة مع سلام دائم على الرسول القرشي قرشي الخاتم وآله وصحبه الأبرار الحائز مراتب الفخار اعلم هديت أن أفضل المن العلم يزيل الشك الشك عنك ودرا ويكشف الحق لذي القلوب ويوصل العبد إلى المطلوب فاحرص على فهمك للقواعد جامعة المسائل الشوارد لترتقي في العلم خيرا مرتقى وتكتفي سبل الذي وتكتفي سبل الذي قد وفق. So he's trying to say وتكتفي to tread on وتكتفي سبل الذي قد وفق. To tread on the path on those who are what who are given توفيق. Meaning Sheikh Salih ibn Abdullah ibn Hamid al-Usaimi he's taken the path who Allah has given توفيق like Abu Muhammad. And that's how wallah, you always know the ulama. They take from the ulama. And they are like the ulama. Later he's going to bring the example of that. Then the author says, وَأَعْوَنُ شَيْءٍ عَلَى الْوُصُولِ The author uses here, وَأَعْوَنُ Jazakallah khairan, Shaykh Moore. This word wa a'wanu, the Sheikh brought it as ismu tafdil, a'wan. And in terms of the language, it seems to be incorrect for the author to say a'wan. It seems to be wrong. Because la yuwafiq al qiyas al sarfi, it doesn't go according to the, the morphological structure that the Arabs have placed. It doesn't go according to it. I shaksiyan tried so hard to find anyone who said this a'wan like this. Walam aqif ala ahadin qala bihi qabla. I haven't come across anyone who said it before Sheikh Salih ibn Abdullahi ibn Hamad al Usaymi. Because the word comes from the word a'ana. Originally, the word a'wan comes from a'ana. And it is not thulathi. For him to bring it as a'wan, he had to have derived it from a thulathi letter. And this is not from its shurut, if you look at the book of Sarf. So what would have been better for him to say is وَأَشْهَدُ عَوْنٍ عَلَى الْوُصُولِ إِلَىٰ عِظَامِ الْعِلْمِ وَإِجْلَالِهِ That would have been better according to the language. But maybe it's shadh and the Sheikh Salih ibn Abdullah ibn Hamdul Usaym is well known for his ittila' his reading and his observation of books. So maybe he stood over somebody who said it and it's rarely used. And it could be shad, because my ittila, my reading is nowhere compared to his, in any way, form or shape. So we'll say, it could be. Akhuna Yasin told me he spoke to him, right? And he said it was wrong. Naam. وَأَعْوَنُ شَيْءٍ عَلَى الْوُصُولِ إِلَىٰ إِعْظَامِ الْعِلْمِ I told Yasin to ask, and Yasin asked, and he said it's wrong, right? 100%. Naam. وَأَعْوَنُ شَيْءٍ على الوصول إلى إعظام العلم وإجلاله وأعوان شيء and the most helping thing, most supporting thing على الوصول. so what did the sheikh just mention? that to attain knowledge, what do you need? to attain knowledge, you need to honor knowledge and glorify knowledge. now he's going to mention to you how to attain to glorify knowledge. I want to glorify knowledge. I want to honor honor knowledge. I want to venerate knowledge. How can I gain that? The author says, وَأَعْوَنُ شَيْءٍ عَلَى الْوُصُولِ إِلَىٰ إِعْظَامِ الْعِلْمِ وَإِجْلَالِهِ One of the ways to attain glorifying and venerating knowledge is مَعْرِفَةُ مَعَاقِدِ تَعْظِيمِهِ is to know the chapters which the author Allah, has placed. The word مَعَاقِد is to knot something, to make a knot. 
Huh? But in English, if I said the knotted chapters, it won't make no, make no English sense, right? But when you knot something, you do. Huh? When the wife and the husband are married, we say aqdul nikah, right? Even though it's not physical, but they're knotted together, right? So here the Sheikh is trying to say he knotted chapters like that. So for you to honor knowledge and to venerate and to revere knowledge, what do you need? These chapters that are gonna come. Okay? And they are comprehensive principles that he's going to bring. That will truly establish the honoring of knowledge in your heart. Anyone who takes it, this pronoun, it goes back to these chapters that are placed. Anyone who takes them, takes them on board, understands them, implements them. And this person will become a person who will venerate knowledge. He will respect knowledge. Uh, he will give knowledge its due rights. Anyone who forsakes it. Anyone who forsakes these chapters and doesn't want to learn these chapters and doesn't want to understand them. All he's forsaken is, is himself. And he has obeyed his desires. Then do not blame in anhu if he becomes short and he becomes low. Do not blame illa nafsa. Do not blame nobody except yourself. Who are you gonna blame? Don't blame nobody except who? Except yourself. The author then brings a method, an Arab pronoun, Arab proverb. It's a method, the Arab say. Which is Yadaka Okata Wafu Kadafah. Your hands Yadaka means your hands. Kata means what? Oh Yadaka Okata means what? Is knotted it. You knotted it with your own hands. You tied it up with your own hands. And your mouth blew into it. This is a story they mentioned. I'm not going to go into the story, but it's a person you see who takes a. What is those things that people use when they're swimming? They put air in and they blow into it. The float can be what's not blown into, right? You know what I mean, right? Let's say a balloon float. Huh? huh? What's good? <laughs> How does it come out with serious terms? Rubber dinghies. <laughs> okay. No, we'll take it. No one can offer us anything better. Can you guys? Rubber dinghy. Dilly. Dingy. Dingy. That does not sound English. <laughs> that sounds Urdu. <laughs> so, it sounds Urdu. We'll stick to uh, what I was saying. <laughs> If that person blows into it and then he goes into the sea and he swims, he places it inside, sometimes some people keep, yeah? Or they hold it and then air goes out and he, and he drowns. Or he, go, or he goes into a critical situation and he comes out safely. What would you say to him? You tied everything with your own hand. Your own mouth blew it. Who did it for you? In other words, it is used for a person, يضرب هذا المثل لمن كان السبب هلاكه منه. The destruction came from you, no one else. No one took the balloon from you. No one done it for you. You did it for yourself. And the destruction that came out of it, there's no one else to blame except you. So the Arabs use that method a lot. They use that proverb a lot. They'll say to you, يداك أو كتا, because the word أو كتا comes from the word أليكا هو شد رأسي. Is to tie something. And anyone who does not honor knowledge, لا يكرمه العلم. Knowledge does not respect you and honor you. If you don't honor knowledge, 
the knowledge will not honor you. All this time the Shaykh was talking about the, chap the, the, the paragraphs that we mentioned. The author was talking about ta'zim al-ilm. And in this, in Balagha, this is known as Bara'atul Istihlal. Bara'atul Istihlal is when a person uses in the introduction things that are indicating that show what they're going to be talking about. Like Amir San'ani does in his Qasab al-Sukar. Hamdan li man yusnadu kullu hamdi ilayhi marfu'an bi ghayri addi muttasilan laysa lahum qita'u ma fihi kathabun wala wadda'u This is the hamd. But he's going to talk about a topic called what? Mustalah al-Hadith, right? So he's trying to, he said, I praise Allah, I praise. That's connected, that's not disconnected. In the chain of that praise, there is no liar or fabrication. Huh? That's called Bara'atul Istilal. In the beginning of your speech, you kind of indicate what your speech is going to be about. It's called what? Bara'atul Istilal. So the author has done that in this. He's talked about ta'zim al-ilm, ijlal al-ilm. So we now know the topic this book is about. Then the author goes on to say, وَسَنَأْتِي بِالْقَوْلِ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ We're going to come with the speech by the permission of who? Allah. The author says, بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ would have been better for him to say, inshaAllah. صح? Because that's the nas of the Qur'an. Allah says, وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِنُ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ And he himself, the Shaykh, Shaykh Salih ibn Abdullah ibn Hamad al-Usaymi is well known for his tahari of alfab, the usage of words. If you look at his shuruh and many of those which I have transcribed, he says many of the times, وَهَذِي كَلِمَةٌ أَجْنَبِيَةٌ This is a kalima which is foreign. The Quran and the Sunnah don't use these words. So he uses a better word. So بإذن الله can be used, but inshaAllah first of all has a textual proof for it. And it's better to use what has textual evidences. Are you with me? Even that though, and bi Allah is better, inshaAllah is better because the Mashi'ah has what? Mashi'ah Qadariyah and Mashi'ah Shar'iyah. So it encompasses both and it's more comprehensive in that matter. وَلِذَلِكَ ibn al-Qayyim فَصَّلَ فِي كِتَابِ الْبَدَاعِ الْفَوَائِدِ This matter. The Sheikh says, وَسَنَأْتِي بِالْقَوْلِ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ عِشْرِينَ مَقْعِدًا the, th the author says, we're going to, inshaAllah ta'ala, mention 20 chapters. 20 specified chapters. يُعَظَّمُ بِهَا الْعِلْمُ Knowledge is going to be venerated and it's going to be glorified. مِنْ غَيْرِ بَسْطٍ لِمَبَاحِثِهَا And its units will not be expanded on. The word mabhath, it falls under masail. The, a book is broken into this. It's kitab, bab, masail, mabahith. Mabahith falls under Masail. It's different Masail that come. Uh, sorry, it's different Mabahith that come, it becomes a Mas'ala. M many Masail that come together becomes a Bab. Many Babs that come together make a Kitab. And that's how books are generally made. So the author he says, The units and the subheadings which my book deals with, I'm not going to do expanding on it. And that's true. Because his speech is very what? And even his shuruh are like that. Wallahi, it's very amazing. That Sheikh Saleh, Ibn Abdullah Ibn Hamid al-Usaymi is a man, he speaks very little. But what he says is what? Look how many, how long did it take us to go through one page, no two pages only. Look how many explanations that we had to do. The words are very powerful he uses. So he said, I'm not going to go too much details in it. Because the place, the position cannot hold that. This book is meant to be for a student of knowledge, how to seek knowledge and how to gain knowledge and how to honor knowledge and how to venerate knowledge. This time and place is not for it. And this in Balagha is known as Muraat Muqtad al Mukhatab, observing the individual you're addressing, how you need to address. لذلك, the asalib of Balagha is different. There's a uslub known as uslub khutabi, wa'adi, uslub ilmi. The methods of teaching are different. You can't teach a book by saying, Ayyuha al Muslimun, wa man lam yukrim al ilma, la yukrim al ilma. You can't do like a khutbah al Jum'ah, can you? 
your form of speech of teaching is different. Styles of teaching, are, styles of speech is different. Balagha teaches you that. There's a usloob known as usloob adabi. The Sheikh here uses a lot of usloob ilmi with usloob adabi. Those are the two asalib that Sheikh Usaybi uses. Now he's very adabi here means literature and the language and the caliber he uses is very high. Rich words. And then educational as well. He used technical shar'i terms. فَإِنَّ الْمَقَامَ لَا يَحْتَمِلُ The place cannot hold this. وَالْإِتِيَانُ عَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ غَايَةُ كُلِّ مَعْقَدٍ يَحْتَاجُ إِلَىٰ زَمَنٍ مَدِيدٍ And every chapter to bring what the ultimate goal is of it, to bring the final understanding of it, all of the meanings that is needed in this chapter, is also something that's going to take a lot of our time. You can't reach the غَايَة, the ultimate objective of every chapter, can you? It's not meant to be like that. It's just meant to be touch a couple of points to keep it moving. A couple of points. Naam. Well, itiyanu ala gaya tu kuli maqidin yahtaju ila zaman in medid. Medid means long time. Well, muradu huna tabsira tu at tadkira. A tabsira means ishara. It's to point out. What tadkira means reminder. As Allah says in the Quran, with akir fa inna dikra tanfa ul mu'minin. Remind. For verily the reminder benefits the. The believer, all oh, this book is just to remind you. Many of you already know all of these issues, but it's just a reminder. It's just to do irshad, to guide you into what is good for you. The, the Sheikh says, little that remains is more beneficial than a lot that is tossed over the shoulder, dismissed. And that's, in other words, some of the scholars, they say مَا قَلَّ وَدَلْ is better. خَيْرُ الْكَلَامِ مَا قَلَّ وَدَلَّ The best of speech is what is little in structure and it is to the point. That's why the Prophet ﷺ mentioned to us the khutbah al Jum'ah. The khatib who's doing the khutbah, it shows you the fiqh of a khatib who's what? Who speaks little. Walidarik al-Sheikh Saleh al-Usayb is like that. His khutbahs are very, very short. It's 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes. Naam. And he leads the prayer for, mashallah, a while. Have you prayed with him, Yasir? Naam, I've transcribed some of them. Very little. 10 to 15 minutes is his whole khutbah. Yeah? That's how the Prophet was, alayhi salatu salam. Some people, you look at the time, you look. And even if it was long, but he was saying gems, la. His whole khutbah, it was, it's, he's repeating what he was saying the first five minutes. That's all it is all day. He's saying different wordings, just the same points. The khutbah being short to the point, giving the people bullet points that they need to keep in their brain. So when they leave the khutbah, they know what, what, what you were saying. It's better than if they leave the khutbah and they say, what was he talking about? What was he saying? And if the speech goes out too much, it, it, and it's too much, it goes over the people's heads, they don't remember, and it's not, and it's not structured in their head. So that's what he's trying to say. وَقَلِيلٌ لِتُلْ يَبْقَى فَيَنْفَعُ خَيْرٌ مِنْ كَثِيرٍ يُلْقَى فَيَنْفَعُ Statistics have shown that a general normal person, comprehension and understanding and being alert is the first 45 minutes. Anyone who carries on from after 45 minutes is a trained person. It's a trained person, it's a student of knowledge, a person who's educated, who's learning, a person who's been doing this for so long. They are generally the people who can carry on for 45 minutes. Or unless that which is being done is something that's entertaining the person, then they can focus people. And that's subhanAllah, one of the reasons why people, ya ikhwa, can't focus anymore is from childhood. We were taught things that go fast. Cartoons and these things teach people to listen and only want things that are fast. Look at the cartoons. Kids don't understand what's happening. It's dumping. They're running. The hills are building. Then the bam, it goes into the hole. It comes out fast again. It's look at the speed. It's all speed. And that's why people only love, they'll only listen to lecture that's three seconds. Five seconds. Boom. They'll give it, they'll be attentive. Some people even look at what? Some people look at what? 
They will look at how, how, long, how, the, how long the time is and based on that they will watch it. Sah? Me, if I do a 20 part video and I do, I always find, I realize this, and I'm, I was, I'm always amazed. People always look at the last video I done more than the, the first and the last is always the most. Do you know why? Because they always want to know when I stopped, if I finish this one, if I finish the uh, series I'm doing. Maybe because I don't finish my series, maybe that might be a reason. But the point being, a lot of the times, they just want to know how long it is. So if they want to go, if they don't. People just want to know the time. And scholars, subhanAllah, recently Sheikh Abdul Kareem Al Khudair and Sheikh Mashur Hassan met each other. Sheikh Mashur talks about it. He said, Sheikh Abdul Kareem Al Khudair and I met each other in Riyadh. So when he said I met him, Sheikh Abdul Kareem Al Khudair said to Sheikh Mashur, What are you teaching now? And he said, I'm currently teaching Sahih Muslim. Sheikh Abdul Kareem Al Khudair is asking Sheikh Mashur. He said, I'm teaching currently Sahih Muslim. Sheikh Mashur is saying this. He said, how long have you been teaching it? This is one of the most prominent questions and the most frequent questions of Sheikh Abdul Kareem Al-Khudair. And so Sheikh Mashur said, a couple of years, and he mentioned an amount of years he's been teaching it for. Sheikh Abdul Kareem Al-Khudair said, good, good. Let the lessons go on for a while. Don't do short stuff. It's better that you teach a book for five, six years and you don't finish it. That you what? Then you do it three, four, five days and it's all over and it's done with. I mean, both our views on the different opinions. I had Sheikh Al-Saymi fight and argue against the argument of people criticizing him for finishing books quickly. And he brings his arguments forward. <laughs> Everyone has their way of seeing things. And of course, each place befits its timing. But the point is, generally some scholars, they used to go over books for years. And inshallah, many examples are going to come. But here there's another ta'qib in terms of the usage of the words, the, the language of the Sheikh, which is, he says, وَقَلِيلٌ يَبْقَى فَيَنْفَعُ وَخَيْرٌ مِّنْ كَثِيرٍ يُلْقَى فَيَرْفَعُ uh, This is called sajjah in the language, which is that it rhymes. And the Sheikh, hafizahullah, he's known to do this. Sheikh Salah Usaymi speaks like that. His words generally do rhyme. So I know that's not takalluf, 